There are some vitamins and supplements that help out a fast. They help get you more benefit out of a fast. But then there's some that are seemingly helpful, but actually set you back with your fast. And we're gonna outline them. So this is a very simple, short video that's gonna outline the supplements and vitamins that do indeed affect your fast negatively. Not necessarily break them, but ones that you probably wanna stay away from or at least just have during your eating window. They're not necessarily bad. Now, I do ask that you hit that red subscribe button. We've got new videos coming out every single day, and this is the internet's leading intermittent fasting channel. So your go-to for all intermittent fasting resources, like what to break a fast with, et cetera, et cetera. Okay, then also hit that little notification bell, that little bell icon. And then after this video, check out the Zero Fasting app. I've got some really cool videos on that app, but it's a really neat thing. It's got a fasting timer, it's got all these fasting tips, and it's a totally free app. They're a big supporter of this channel, and it's just congruent with the kind of things that I talk about. So check them out down below in the description after you watch this video. First one on the list is probably one of the most commonly talked about ones, multivitamins. Okay, at first glance, it seems like a multivitamin would be fine. In fact, it seems like it would be good, right? It's giving you vitamins and nutrients and minerals that you would need during a fast. But it's actually not the case. You see, a lot of the vitamins that are inside a multivitamin are antioxidants. For example, vitamin C. All right. Now, when you are fasting, you're trying to get your body to go through a little bit of stress. Okay, you want that stress because that's what allows your cells to ultimately adapt. Okay, so we have these things called SIRT1 and SIRT3. Okay, this is a gene expression that is required. Okay, for actual adaptation to occur. So during a fast, we have elevations in this SIRT1 and this SIRT3. However, we only get elevations in it if we have a little bit of oxidative stress. So in other words, because the body is going through a little bit of stress and because the cells are kind of like scavenging for material and scavenging for fuel, they get under stress a little bit and they emit some oxidative stress. Well, that small amount of oxidative stress elevates these longevity genes like SIRT1 and SIRT3. So if you're having something like vitamin C, it actually quells the antioxidant effect for the body. So it's becoming spoiled in a sense, right? It's like the vitamin or the antioxidant is doing the work instead of the body developing its ability to do the work. So very important. So if you do take a multivitamin, you wanna make sure it doesn't have vitamin C or other antioxidants in it, which is pretty hard to come by. Okay, now within that same token of conversation, anything that is going to be a soft gel is going to break a fast. That's a very simple thing to lay out. Okay, it's not going to be fasting friendly because it's going to have fat in it, it's going to have oil. Okay, vitamin E is vitamin E oil. Okay, things like that. So you wanna be very, very careful with that. Uh, basically, you should be aligning your multivitamin to be taken during your eating period. Most of the vitamins that are in a multivitamin, even though they're water soluble, are going to absorb better with food to begin with. Okay, I have another video that talks about supplements to take during a fast, but I'm gonna stay away from those in this particular video. Next up is fish oil. First of all, fish oil is definitely in a soft gel. So that's gonna break a fast in and of itself. But additionally, we have to look at the fact that fish oil absorbs much better with food. You're not gonna get that big of a benefit. When you're in a fasted state, your body is upregulating anti-inflammatory prostaglandins anyway. So you might as well just let your body do its anti-inflammatory job and not really worry about taking fish oil that's gonna break your fast anyway. Then we look at pre-workouts. Okay, here's the thing with pre-workouts. Most of them have a bunch of fillers in them. Most of them have maltodextrin in them, okay? So even though they seem like they're harmless and they're going to give you energy within a gym, the maltodextrin itself is going to break a fast because that's gonna trigger an insulin spike, but usually the different things that they have in there, the natural flavors, this and that, it's defeating the purpose of a fast. I mean, yes, from an overall body composition standpoint, you'll probably still lose fat if you take a pre-workout during your fasted state, but you're kind of mitigating that potential like cellular longevity effect that you're after. So really, it doesn't make sense to have it when you can get a very similar effect with some black coffee, okay? And fun fact, if you wanna make a little pre-workout, just take some black coffee, take like 3,000 milligrams or a little bit less, whatever you wanna do, of citrulline malate, and then take a little bit of beta alanine, mix it all into coffee, all stuff you can get on Amazon super cheap and you can make your own pre-workout that's gonna have a similar effect. Okay, then we have branch chain amino acids. I've done plenty of videos talking about this, but a lot of people out there still try to fight me on it. They say branch chain amino acids do not spike your insulin. Well, what branch chain amino acids are, are they're broken down aminos from protein. And the purpose of them is to try to be anti-catabolic. You take them so your body doesn't break down muscle in between meals or when you're fasted or whatever. The problem is the leucine in it, which is an amino acid in BCAAs, 
is highly insulinogenic. Okay, it triggers beta cells within the pancreas to secrete insulin. It activates what is called mTOR, which is exactly what we don't want activated during a fast. So at its very core, its very core value, it is the opposite of fasting. Does that mean BCAAs are bad? No, I mean, I, I kind of feel like people are ripping you off when they sell them to you, but for the most part, they're not bad, they just don't work during a fast, and yes, it's correct that BCAAs will spike your insulin more if they're taken with glucose. I give her that argument all the time. But they still secrete insulin or trigger insulin secretion even in small amounts. So just don't have it during your fast. You already have an anti-catabolic muscle sparing effect happening. Don't worry about it. Just touch on this one for a second, protein powder, because it comes up a lot, definitely breaks a fast and definitely not something you want to take. Okay, then we move into MCT oil. I still put this as a supplement because it's sold as a supplement. People see it in capsules, you see it in liquid form, whatever. It is a fat. Yes, it's digested differently. It's actually not even really digested. It's going through a passive diffusion. It gets absorbed through the small intestine like directly. It's pretty interesting. But that being said, it's still a fuel. Okay, it goes to the liver, it creates ketones easier, but you're still putting a buffer between you and the endogenous fuel that your body is trying to utilize and create during a fast. So MCT, no go. Okay, vitamin E, like I talked about already, a no go. Okay, it's an oil and it's an antioxidant. There are a lot of studies that show that vitamin E in general, even for older people, is not a good thing to take even when you're not fasting because it is stopping the body's ability to combat its own oxidative stress. A little bit of oxidative stress is a good thing so your body can adapt. Vitamin C directly, there's a plethora of science surrounding specifically vitamin C, but do not take a vitamin C during a fast as it, again, is going to trigger that antioxidant effect, which is going to hinder the effect of a fast. Then we have vitamin D. Vitamin D is best taken with food to begin with, okay? Vitamin D is technically a hormone, not even really a vitamin. So if you're not gonna be having vitamin D with the food that it needs to really do its job properly, it's not doing you much good. Plus, it's usually in an oil form, okay? It's usually in a liquid suspension or it's usually in some form of capsule that is still going to be a soft gel. So you usually wanna avoid that. Another one that comes up is vitamin coenzyme Q10. Coenzyme Q10 is one of my favorite supplements all around. But this is one that you wanna take prior to going into your fast, not during a fast. Not because it breaks a fast, but because it's essentially making the electron transfer easier, okay? So what it is, in a way, is it's making, it's making fuel transfer in the cell easier. So the electron transport chain basically passes um, energy down between electrons and it passes it into the cell, okay? So what ends up happening is, Coenzyme Q10 makes it so that the electron can be received easier. It makes it a bigger catcher's mitt, right? Well, this is great for just overall energy metabolism, but it's not something you want to take during a fast. First of all, it's a potential risk of breaking your fast to begin with. But second of all, if you take it at the beginning of a fast, you're enriching your body's ability to accept the electron without having to take it during your fast. And it's not one of these things that you're getting an acute effect with. Okay, you're getting a more chronic and more long-term effect. So take your coenzyme Q10 before you go into your fast, it can help you out a lot. If you have other vitamins and supplements that you want me to list out, put them down below in the comment section. I'm happy to do a further video breakdown on them because there's so many. But these are the top ones that I would recommend avoiding. As always, see you tomorrow.